chimpanzees have forced people to realize that we are not the only beings on the planet with personalities, minds, and feelings. There is no sharp line. It's a very fuzzy line, and it's getting fuzzier all the time. When I first began and went to Cambridge University, I was told that you couldn't talk about personality, you couldn't talk about minds and thinking, and you absolutely couldn't talk about emotions because those were unique to us. They have emotions similar to, or perhaps identical, to those that we call happiness and sadness, anger, frustration, and so forth. Each chimpanzee is as different from every other as we are. It was the most exciting and meaningful to watch the development of family relationships, to see the development of these long-term supportive affectionate bonds between mothers and offspring and between brothers and sisters over a life that can be 60 years or more. And to realize that there are good mothers and bad mothers in chimp society as in human society, and that the experience of the child during those early one or two years is really significant in shaping their adult behavior, as is the case for human infants as well. Because there's nothing more like us than a chimp today, it gives us a springboard to say, what is it that makes us so different? We're obviously different. We, and only we, have developed the kind of language that enables us to teach about things, events that aren't present, to learn from the past, to plan for the distant future, and to discuss so that ideas can be born. If we grant that humans are the most intellectual being that's ever walked on this planet, which we are, then how is it that at the same time we're destroying planet Earth, which is the only home we have? Is it perhaps because we've lost something called wisdom? I'm thinking of the cultures where the elders would sit around and when they made a decision would say, how will this affect our people generations ahead? Whereas today, how will the decision I make today affect me and my family now? How will it affect the next shareholder meeting three months ahead? The tragedy is that all of the great apes are highly threatened and some of them could become extinct. There's some kind of terrible disconnect between this incredibly clever brain that's taken us to the moon and sent robots to Mars and the heart, the seat of love and compassion. We're losing this valuable material which will perhaps help us to come to even greater grips with how we've become the unique and rather peculiar primates that we have become. Without Louis Leakey, there would be no Jane study of the Gombe chimpanzees. Louis Leakey, who suggested I should go out and try and study the chimpanzees before I had a degree of any sort, he really stuck his neck out. He always had the courage of his convictions. If he believed something, nothing would get in his way. He was going to send me. I wanted to go. He was going to get the money. He was going to batter down the resistance of the British colonial rulers. After I'd seen David Greybeard using and making tools and realizing that at that time, 1960, it was thought that humans and only humans used and made tools so that we were defined when I was growing up as man the tool maker. So I sent Louis Leakey a telegram about what I'd seen and he sent a telegram back. Now we must redefine man, redefine tool or accept chimpanzees as humans.